for our next lesson in module 11. We're going to be looking at 11.3, angle, angle, similarity. And our goal for this lesson is to understand what makes two triangles similar to one another and how to use similar triangles to find a missing link. Back in module 12, when we were looking at dilations, we talked about similar figures. And it was at that time that we first came up with a rough definition for similarity, which we said was two figures that might have the same shape but different size. They might not that they might have the same shape. They do have the same shape, but they will have different size. So those figures will be similar. The angles will all be congruent, but the lengths of the sides will be different. In fact, taking that a step further, we can def further define similar figures as two triangles. Similar triangles are two triangles with two pairs of congruent angles, which will lead to having two pairs of proportional sides. We'll be using that in this lesson to help us find our uh, length of our missing side, which was a second part of our goal. But to start with, we're just going to look at some triangles to determine if we can figure out if the triangles are in fact similar or not. And to do that, we're going to be looking at the measures of their angles. So for our first example, our directions tell us simply to determine if the two triangles are similar or not. And so in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to show that there are two pairs of congruent angles in these triangles. Now if we don't remember, congruent just means that it's the same measure. So if two angles have the same measurement, that means that they're congruent. If we, and if we're able to show that we have two pairs of congruent angles, then we can say that the triangles are similar. Well, right away, we should see that angle E and angle B are congruent to each other. So that's one pair of congruent angles, and we know that they're congruent because they're both 90 degrees. Based on these boxes in the corner, we know that those angles are congruent because they're both right angles, they're both 90 degrees. So angle B is congruent to angle, B, angle E. And you would write that angle B is congruent to angle E. So we kind of have a, an equal sign with kind of a, a squiggly line on the top of it. That's our congruent symbol. So angle B is congruent to angle E. But now what we need to do is we need to show that we have one more pair of congruent angles. So when we look, we see that angle C is 25 degrees and angle D is 65 degrees. We don't know the measure of angle A. We don't know the measure of angle F. So what we can do is we can try and show that angle A equals 65 degrees, or we can try and show that angle F equals 25 degrees. And if we can do either of those things, that will give us our second pair of congruent angles. And again, once we have that second pair of congruent angles, we know that the triangles are similar to each other. So now it really doesn't matter which route we take, if we find the measure of angle A or if we find the measure of angle F. Either way, finding the measure of angle A or the measure of angle F will tell us if we have two pairs of congruent angles or not. So let's go ahead and solve for angle A. So to do that, we can write down the measure of angle A plus 90, which is the measure of angle B that we have right here, plus 25 which we get from the measure of this angle here. So essentially what I've written is this angle plus this angle plus this angle. Now if we add those together, they're going to equal 180. We learned that in module 11, lesson 12, just in our previous lesson. So we're trying to find the measure of angle A. So we're going to combine like terms, 90 and 25. So we have the measure of angle A plus 115 is equal to 180. Now we're going to subtract 115 from both sides, where these will cancel, and we have the measure of angle A does in fact equal 65 degrees. Therefore we know that the measure of angle A is congruent to the measure of angle D. So we can write measure of angle A 
is equal to the measure of angle D and therefore angle A is congruent to angle D. So that gives us one pair of congruent angles down here. Angle A is congruent to angle D. We already had another pair of angles up, congruent angles up here. Angle B is congruent to angle E. So therefore, we have our two pairs of congruent angles, which is all the information that we need to state that these two triangles are similar to each other. Now, when we're stating that two triangles are similar, the order in which we name our triangles is important. And what we need to do when naming our similar triangles is we have to make sure that the congruent angles are in the same space of the name. And so what I mean by that is if we're going to say that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, we need to, we need to name these triangles according to their congruent angles. So we're going to say the triangle B a C is similar to triangle E D F. Now we have to go in that order when we're naming our triangles. The reason we do so, angle B is congruent to angle E. We have that up here. Next letter, angle A and angle D. We have that down here. And then our, our third letter, each triangle, would have to go last. So again, we have triangle BAC is similar to this symbol here, is a similarity symbol. So triangle BAC is similar to triangle EDF. Let's take a look at one more example where we're trying to show similarity. For our second example, we're told to determine if the two triangles are similar. So we have triangles GHI, triangles GHI, and triangles JKL, and we're trying to determine if they're similar. So, we can see right away that angle H is congruent to angle K because they both have a measurement of 110 degrees. Now we need to determine if the measure of angle J is going to equal 45. We see right away that angle L and angle G those angles are not congruent because they have different angle measures. So the only way that these are similar is if angle J is 45 or that angle I measures 35 degrees. If we can show that, then the two triangles are similar. If we can disprove it, then the triangles are not similar. So we either show that I equals, 130, equals 35 degrees or J equals 45 degrees. So let's do the math to see if we can show that these two triangles are similar to each other. So let's focus on the purple triangle to find the measure of angle I. To do that, we'll take 110 plus 45. 110 is the measure of angle H, plus 45 is the measure of angle G, plus we don't know the measure of angle I, but we know that's going to equal 180. So we'll start off by combining the like terms. 110 and 45 are going to give us 155 plus the measure of angle I equals 180. Now we subtract 155 from both sides. Those will cancel on the right. And we have the measure of angle I is going to be equal to 25, 25 degrees. Now, since the measure of angle I is 25 degrees, that does not match up with the measure of angle L. We also know that it's not going to match up with the measure of angle J. So these two triangles are not similar. And the reason for that, again, is we do have one pair of congruent angles, but neither of these angles here match up to 35 degrees. And if neither of these matches 35 degrees, then we know that the triangles cannot be similar to one another. So although we do have one pair of congruent angles, angles H, angle H is congruent to angle K, because we do not have another pair of congruent angles, we cannot say that these triangles are similar to one another. So that wraps up the first part of our goal.
where we're trying to determine if two triangles are similar to each other or not. For the next part of our goal, for the next few examples, we're going to be taking a look at using similar triangles to determine the length of a, the missing length of a side of a triangle. So as we get into the second part of the lesson, I just want to recap that if we have similar triangles, if we know two triangles are similar, then we know that we have two pairs of proportional sides. In fact, all pairs, all corresponding sides of the triangles are going to be proportional. And we can use that to help us find the measure of a missing side. All right, for a, thir for a third example, we want to determine the measure of the missing side. Now, obviously, in this diagram, there are no measurements given, so we don't know what missing side we're looking at. But I just want to kind of overview how the sides of these two triangles are proportional. Now, when you look at this, you might just see one triangle but we can actually deconstruct it so that we have two different triangles, which are going to look like this. So we have the bigger triangle, which would be made up by sides M, Q, and O, or angles M, Q, and O, and the smaller triangle, which would be made up by angles N, P, and O. So we have an overlap of an angle here. Angle O is in both triangles. So again, our bigger triangle, which I drew in green, would be M, Q, O, and our smaller triangle, would be NPO. And so there's a proportional relationship that exists between the corresponding sides of these triangles. And so if we take the proportional re relationship of the shortest sides of the triangle, that's going to be equal to the proportional relationship of the medium side of the triangle, which is going to be equal to the proportional relationship of the longest side of the triangle. So I'd write that out as the proportional relationship between MQ over NP is equal to the proportional relationship of QO over PO, which is equal to the proportional relationship of OM to ON. Now let's add in some side measurements to see how we can use these proportional relationships. All right, so we're given some measurements now. The length of segment MQ, we're told, is 12 feet. We're trying to find the length of segment NP, and we're told that the segment length of segment NO is 6 feet, and MN is 10 feet. So let's go ahead and substitute those values and where they go. So for MQ, we're going to substitute in 12. So we have 12 over. Now for NP, we don't know that value, so we're going to call that X. And that's going to be equal to, now QO and PO, we don't have any information on those two sides. So we're going to bypass that. We're not going to worry about these two sides right now. We're going to instead focus on these sides here. Now OM, OM, this side here, because we know that this segment is 10 and this segment is 6, we know that the entire segment is going to be 16. And we know that the length of segment ON right here is going to be 6. So now we have a proportional relationship. We can use cross multiplication in order to solve for X. To do that, we're going to take 16 times x, giving us 16x, is equal to 12 times 6, equals 72. So 16x equals 72. We can now go ahead, divide both sides by 16, and we get x is equal to 4.5 feet. So that tells us if we go back to our diagram, the length of this segment here is going to be 4.5 feet long. This can be a bit of a confusing topic in math, so let's take a look at one more example. For our last example, we want to determine the distance between the lamppost and the stop sign. So this is the distance that we're trying to figure out right here, the length of segment TS. Now the measurements we do know, we know the, the height of the lamppost 
is going to be 18 feet. We know the height of the stop sign is going to be 5 feet. And then we know that the distance between the stop sign and some arbitrary point P is going to be 8 feet. One thing I want to point out with this example, we're trying to find the length of segment TS right here. However, TS is not the entire length of one side of the triangle. Our proportional relationships are only for the exact size of the triangle. So, because we don't know this, we're going to have to do some further math. And we aren't given any measurements of this side here, so we can presume that we're not going to be using those sides in our proportional relationships. So first thing, before we start trying to figure out what the length of the missing side is right away, we need to first determine what our proportional relationship will be. Well, we see that we have the length of the lamppost and the stop sign can be set up as a proportional relationship. So one of our sides, one of our proportions can be 5 over 18. The height of the stop sign over the height of the lamppost. Now, since the height of the stop sign is in the numerator, then that tells us that the other piece of information needs to come from this smaller triangle. So 5 over 18 is going to be equal to 8 over, and now we need to figure out what this side is here. We can use x to represent the length of this missing side. And so the length of this entire part of this bigger triangle can be represented by x plus 8. So that's what we're going to put in our denominator here. x plus 8. Now one thing I don't want us to think we can do, we may not, we're not allowed to just go ahead and cancel those 8's out. That is not how math works. We cannot take and just cancel out the 8's. That is not okay to do. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to use our cross multiplication, multiply 5 times x plus 8, and multiply 8 times 18, and set up our equation that way. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit, where we're going to have 5 times x plus 8 is equal to 18 times 8. We've learned how to do these already. We're going to distribute the 5 to the x and the plus 8, giving us 5x plus 40 is going to be equal to 18 times 8 equals 144. Solve this for x. Start off by subtracting 40 from both sides. These will cancel, giving us 5x equals 104, divide everything by 5, and the length of x is going to be equal to 20.8 feet. So the length of side x up here is going to be 20.8 feet. So this segment here we determined is going to be represented by x to equal 20.8 feet. Write down any questions that you might have, and hopefully at this point you're able to better understand what makes two triangles similar, and then also how to use similar triangles to find the length of a missing side. Write down any questions that you might have so that we can go over them together in class.